Fundazzjoni Patrimonju Malti approached me sometime in 2007. They told me that they were looking to stage another prestigious exhibition after a gap of eight years and that Edward Caruana Dingley was the perfect candidate being such an established artist and having also overseas fame. I started studying about this artist since there was a lacuna in the information about his paintings and his contribution within the development of the Maltese art. As the research progressed, I managed to trace works in the prominent public buildings in Malta, many in public collections and some other works scattered in other countries. So I helped the Fundazione Patrimonio as well by liaising with the owners of the works by Caruana Dingli to be exhibited at the palace. After the Antique Furniture and Mortar exhibition, we felt that um, we had enough experience under our belt to start curating exhibitions in-house. Therefore, in this occasion, with Edward Caruana Dingley, it was the first exhibition that we did completely from A to Z. That means we designed it and curated it. Patrimony was fortunate enough to be granted the use of the Grand Master's Palace in Valletta as a venue for this exhibition. And fitting 250 paintings in the throne room and dining room was no small feat. However, as one of Patrimonio's aim is spreading awareness of the island's extensive cultural heritage as much as possible, it was important that such an exhibition would be held in a location that was easily accessible to the viewing public, making the palace in the centre of Valletta the, ve the perfect venue. Like with most of our exhibitions, 80% of the artefacts that are on display in our exhibitions come from private homes. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have this relationship with the private lenders. And for this particular exhibition, we actually saw around 400 paintings. Um, in the end, we only managed to fit in 250 because of the space availability. The palace as a location was important due to the fact that over here there are various paintings by this artist. We have the majestic portrait of King George VI located permanently in the state dining room and in the same room there are the huge life-length portraits of um, Queen Alexandra and King Ed Edward VII. Secondly, the palace was important for the life of Edward Caruana Dingley. Since in 1926, he was decorated as Knight of Honorary Grace of the Venerable Order of St. John of Jerusalem. The ceremony happened in the throne room of the palace. The artist himself painted the ceremony of the investiture on a large canvas and he included his own portrait in the work as well. This huge painting was brought to Malta specifically for the exhibition from the Museum of the Order of St. John in London. Many months of planning culminated in a burst of intense activity in the three weeks leading up to the opening. A structure that was specifically designed to fit all the paintings while being conscious of the themes that run through the ex exhibition was built inside the state rooms. With the paintings being of all different sizes and some large portraits, a series of rooms and corridors were incorporated in this custom-built construction to maximize the space available. The hanging of the paintings had to be planned and predetermined to the last millimeter. It took 2,000 square meters of fiberboard and plywood and over 6,200 man hours to build this structure, which was finished off with the highest specifications, complete with skirting and coving. His reputation as an artist escalated since he managed to earn envied commissions from the high society in Malta as well from the British realm. And these included politicians, clerical members as well as businessmen. 
the Anglophilia that he inherited from his father, which was strengthened during his years in the British Army, and due to his ties with the Strickland family, helped him gain very important commissions within the British realm. Indeed, he managed to paint even various members of the British royal family. In fact, he painted from life King George V in Buckingham Palace, and the king himself praised the artist for what he called the life picture. There is another portrait of his lifelong lover, Olga Gallianaudi, with a yellow hat. And for me, this painting is striking for its freshness, not only for the free brushwork that the artist used in this work, but also the way he portrayed her informal, informal smile. Apart from being an extraordinary retratista, Caruana Dingley was also a pioneer in elevating Morty's landscapes and traditional scenes into gorgeous works full of life and positivity. He was an acclaimed Morty's ambassador who promoted our country overseas. Indeed, his album Colour and Life in Malta obtained international success as a popular souvenir from Malta. Edward Caruana Dingley's palette was as rich and varied as the epoch he lived in. His powerful renderings of local and traditional life are more real and intense than photos of the same scenes taken in his time. They are point in time snapshots of life almost forgotten. Once the selection of works was finalised, the condition of each painting was fully assessed. A number of these works needed some form of conservation, such as repairing any damage to canvases, cleaning, applying reversible matte varnish for protection, treating watercolours for foxing and repairing or replacing of frames. In the meantime, research was carried out in all portraits so that biographical notes on the sitters could be put together for the actual exhibition and the accompanying catalogue. Authors were engaged to contribute articles about Caruana Dingley's life, his involvement in the Malta Government School of Art, his role as a portrait painter, as well as a society painter, and about how, through his watercolours, he interpreted the Malta of his day in his work. The information in this catalogue closed a gap in an important time frame within the Maltese artistic context that was never really studied in depth and this gives basis to further research in the future. As you can well imagine this all comes at a hefty cost. Besides um, all the, the building of the exhibition we have insurance costs, we have security costs, the, the labour costs, a lot of these costs which one doesn't really see but they, they all add up. FPM is an NGO, a voluntary organisation, which relies completely on donations. So we'd like to thank our supporters, uh, mainly our associates, benefactors, sponsors and patrons for their annual donations and their constant support and also the contribution we get from government. Without these donations, none of this would be possible. So thank you.